Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building an LED flasher circuit, and we could use it as a strobe light if you use high intensity LEDs. Now, you have probably seen strobe lights on aircraft, on the wingtips, or on helicopters, and they follow special rules of where they're placed and what color they are. You see them on boats, so you could put them on snowmobiles or a quad ATV, anywhere where you want to draw attention. I look at the circuit, I'm using a 555 timer and a CD4017 decade counter and usually when you see that combination you think of an LED chaser. Now I have built an LED chaser and made a video and instead of using the 555 timer I'm using a blinking LED as the clock source. And this is the old familiar LED sequence circuit using the CD4017 decade counter which has 10 outputs. Now I only have 8 outputs out of the 10 outputs hooked up because I didn't have enough LEDs so you could add two more LEDs to this uh, sequence. Now I'm clocking the chip with a flashing LED, which you can see at the top left hand corner. That's what's clocking the IC, which is sequencing the LEDs. So you could substitute this clock circuit for a 555 timer, so you could adjust the sequence rate to your liking. Okay, so that's our classic LED chaser circuit. And it shows you how a CD4017 decade counter works. It shows you that a logic one is rippled through the 10 outputs one at a time in sequence on each clock pulse. Now we could take a diode array and use them as steering diodes, you can see on my breadboard, and we could come up with our own custom flash sequence. So I'll plug in power to my breadboard, and I have three LEDs, and these two LEDs are a double flash, and they're dovetailed, so it gives you a wig-wag effect. Then I have a single flash, and I could add another LED, to our sequence, which is another double flash. So that's one frame, that's 10 clock pulses, and it repeats itself. And I'll turn off the light to my bench. You can see we get a strobing effect using the CD4017 decade counter. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. This is my LED strobe flashing circuit. And it has two ICs. The first one is the common 555 timer, which you can see on the left and with the resistor values of 220k ohm and a capacitor of 0.22 microfarad we're going to get a pulse strain output on pin 3 of around 10 hertz and that's going to be our system clock so this 10 hertz uh, clock pulse train is fed into the clock input of, of the 4017 which is a decade counter with 10 outputs now these 10 outputs are labeled Q0 to Q9 and every time we get a clock input on pin 14 we're going to get a digital 1 which is going to ripple through Q0 to Q9 in sequence, just like we saw on the LED chaser. But in this case, we're going to insert some steering diodes, which you can see here. It's a diode array, so we can come up with our own custom flashing sequence. So on the first pulse into pin 14, Q0 will go high, which will turn on this LED, and then when Q2 goes high, it will turn on this LED. So we're going to get a double flash, and then when Q1 goes high, and then Q3 goes high, we're going to get a double flash on this LED, but they're dovetailed, so we're going to get kind of like a wig-wag type flash. Q4 output is a single flash, and we don't need a steering diode. That will, that will uh, flash this LED uh, with a single flash. And then Q6 and Q8, we're going to get a double flash on the last LED. Now on my circuit, on my breadboard, I actually had two in series. So we're going to have a double flash, a single, and then a double flash on these two, but they're dovetailed, so we're going to get kind of like a wig-wag effect. So if you understand how this, how these steering diodes work, you can come up with your own custom flashing sequence. Okay, if you want to mount a strobe light on a model, you could just use a high intensity LED like you can see on my breadboard. But for a real vehicle, like an ATV or a snowmobile, you could buy high intensity LEDs that are mountable like this one here. And then you could drive it with a driver, a ULN2803, it's a Darlington driver, and it could sync up to 500 milliamps and you could parallel them for more current drive. Okay, after you get your flasher circuit up and running the way you want it to, you could build it now on a piece of Vero board or strip board, similar to this. Then go online, look for some electronic potting enclosures. Now they come in different shapes and sizes and they have mounting tabs. And you place this board into the electronic potting enclosure. Then find some potting compound, it's two part epoxy potting compound. And fill up the enclosure with potting compound and that will seal your circuit. So it looks similar to this. This is some potting compound in this enclosure. So it will protect your circuit from the elements, from the rain and snow. 
Okay, so now you know how this LED flasher strobe light circuit works. It's easy to build, the parts are easy to get, there's no microcontroller, so there's no coding. And if you look online, you can pick up some high intensity LED lights in an enclosure, easy to mount, and you can come up with your own system. So build up the circuit and see what kind of custom flashing sequences you could come up with.